Dr. Nancy Krieger of Harvard School of Public Health is here now to talk about some important issues. Most importantly now, the impact of COVID-19 and what it's having on communities of color. COVID-19 is having a horrible impact on communities of color and low-income communities in urban areas and in rural areas. And this is best expressed by the excess mortality that is associated there's difficulties in getting COVID tests, for example, so it's even hard sometimes to know who's actually at what risk of, getting, of being a COVID case because of inadequate access to tests. But if you look at the mortality rates, you'll see that on average, the mortality rates, particularly among Black, Latinx, and American Indian, is around three times higher or so. That's on average in terms of across all age groups. But when you look at working age adults, which really reflects what's going on with people who have to work, can, at, at places that involve interactions with other people. They can't work at home. That's not the kinds of jobs they have. You will see mortality rates, age-specific mortality rates, upwards of five to tenfold, which is enormous, a travesty, and should have been prevented. So much of the momentum to address racism as a public health issue has been driven by police violence. How has racism operated within the COVID-19 pandemic? So this ties into much deeper health inequities that we have in our country. And I want to add that also what the impacts on health are, are not only the grieving, grievous mortality and the grieving that comes from it, from COVID itself, but also the ways in which policies have been pursued around what was necessary with regard to the economic shutdowns to try to prevent an, a very infectious disease from hitting that could not be treated and potentially could crash hospital systems and make things very complicated for people in their communities in terms of access to healthcare, whether or not they had COVID itself. And so you can't look at what's going on with COVID outside of already existing inequities in the welfare state policies that we have for in this country, the penurious approaches to poverty alleviation, the fact that how hard it is to get unemployment insurance, the fact of the lack of Medicaid expansion in so many different states, all those problems co coincide. And so it's that there was a basis, who has what kinds of jobs with what kinds of protections in terms of paid sick leave? That's not a guaranteed right. If you can't have paid sick leave and you go to work and you get sick, you get exposed to somebody, do you bring it home? Is that how community spread starts in your community? What are the problems with lack of access to health insurance? What are the problems with access to lack of appropriate medical care? These all existed before COVID-19. I know we all want to do something. What can we do to help? So, yes, absolutely. The general public first can start with, with a better understanding of what the problems are. And the problems are the ways in which structural racism is shaping risk of exposure. And then if you're exposed, what that means. So a reframing that the general public needs to understand that this is not about quote unquote race, it's about racism. A second really important reframing that the general public needs to understand is that although populations of color are at greater risk, in fact, more white non-Hispanic Americans are dying from COVID because they're a larger share of the population. So this is a problem that affects everyone. And to frame it as somehow it's uniquely a problem that is affecting Black, Latinx, and American Indian populations, it's affecting them disproportionately, but to understand the toll in the United States as a whole on the failed response, that requires having a full population perspective on it. How is APHA helping disseminate the information around this issue and working to change it? So the American Public Health Association is very much helping getting good information out on what the real risks are of COVID-19, how people and communities can prepare themselves. And during the early parts of the pandemic, particularly, they were very quick to set up webinars that were very informative for scientific professionals, health professionals, and also get that information then in a form that was accessible to the general public. They've had a very informative website. They are sending out action alerts to APHA members. I distribute them through the caucus that I chair, the Spirit of 1848 Caucus. So they have been very active. It's very clear from what the legislative agendas are that they have been testifying before Congress, before different committees, advocating for a public health approach, advocating for resources, understanding that this is about protecting people overall. So that means the right economic and social policies in addition to the COVID-19 specific policies around protection, personal protective equipment, masks, 
and adequate access to tests and, and treatment.